Hello, my name is Randy Cummins with Black Swan Bodywork, and I'm here today with my friend Melissa. And we're going to be doing a little video here to show uh, how and why we choose certain techniques to address the problems that your clients bring to you on a day-to-day -day basis. So before we started going, well, Melissa and I had a nice talk about what was going on with her, and she asked me if I would to focus on her legs and her arms and her upper shoulders and back today. So absolutely. And so we're going to address both uh, the selection of techniques, which techniques we choose to use, and how we choose to perform them. As of late, I've been using um, more of my feet in the work, so I'll be showing that today, along with some seated position uh, for addressing your client. So, I'm just going to start with a little general loosening here, just to get a sense of what we have to work with here. You know, it's very important uh, as a therapist to establish uh, the rapport between your client, not only in the intake, but also as you're working. You know, there's a constant sense of adjustment when you're working. Uh, you should think of every technique you do as a sense of diagnosis in a way, where it gives you so much feedback as far as how the pressure is, how long you stay in an area, and just what techniques you choose to do. So, in working in working with that premise, I'm just going to start with a little traction here, and just a little general movement to get a range of motion uh, to set sort of like a baseline as far as Melissa's flexibility and acceptability for certain techniques. So, in moving with the leg up towards a 90 degree angle. Oh, we start to stretch the muscles in the back of the leg, the hamstring muscle. So along with some nice stretching here, we can go right into a technique that addresses the hamstrings, but using our knees here. So you remember the focus uh, is um, strain away from just a typical hand pressure, thumb pressure that is very effective and very uh, refined, but can after an amount of time, put stress on the therapist's uh, hands and wrists and up into the shoulders. So, you know, we explore different ways of approaching the areas we want to loosen using our knees more in this case. And you can see it's a lovely position that we have nice support. You know, when Melissa is receiving, like all of us, we need to feel that we're supported so that we have a better chance of letting go. So here I have nice hold of her leg and for contact I'm using my patella, my knee, and just sinking into the posterior muscles of her upper leg, the hamstrings. Sinking into my exhale. Just allows some nice fuller contact and by that I mean not only the surface but also the amount of time that I stay there. You know, this really helps you integrate your work by looking at engaging the both physical and energetic aspects of the body. So, in a lingering pressure, you address the fascia or the connective tissue, allowing the muscle to open up a little bit. And anything we can do to help with blood flow also helps uh, the energy flow or the chi flow in the body. Just coming back a little bit, introducing some footwork. And that really, that opening sequence really helped with the bigger muscles of the leg. So we can see um, how we can address the rest here. Now, in Chinese medicine and shiatsu, uh, we not only uh, do the stretching, which helps open up the joints and create some initial length in the muscle, 
um, but also we address the energy lines in the body, the meridians. And I'm just going to sink in here to address some of the lines here. This particular one, the spleen meridian, is right up underneath the tibia. And as I press in here, I can feel what she was talking about as far as uh, initial tightness in the legs. So rather than labor through it with my thumbs, um, I thought I'd come in and use a little of the footwork that I was talking about. So here I'm just going to use the pads of my toes to sink in. And as you can see, my heel is planted on the ground and I'm shifting my weight from back to forward. And I do that for a couple of reasons, to stay balanced. But also I'm working with my breath. So this keeps me grounded and more aware of what I'm feeling so that I can adjust pressure, appropriate pressure for Melissa. Okay. So these lines of energy come up past the knee into the adductor area, which is above the knee and just uh, below the groin. So I will put the leg in figure four here and continue to compress to loosen the muscle. And as mentioned before, yes, and I've done this 1,000 times at least, compressing with the palm of my hand to address not only the adductors, but again, these aforementioned lines of energy and meridians. But I'm going to explore the opportunity to use my foot in the adductors. And as working therapists who are watching this video, uh, we always look for what's called working signs. Uh, uh, when you position the body, it gives you so much information, both what you're feeling, but also how it moves into certain positions. And you can see here the knee is up above the mat just a little bit, still in a healthy range, but I feel more comfortable to support the structure with a pillow, so then I can come up again and use my foot to address the adductors. You know, we talk so much about support and receiving support and appropriate pressure. Uh, what also I find is important is these natural connections that we have in the body. Here the arch of my foot, because of the shape, fits naturally over the inside of Melissa's thigh through the adductor, so she can take the pressure easy. She is familiar with that contour, that shape, so she lets the pressure in a little bit more. So obviously the foot is broad pressure, but you can always bring more specificity by just using the pads of your toes, just sinking in. Here I can address the individual muscles in a very lovely way. I'm just creating some nice length and space. And I'm, as I'm leaning in, coordinating my weight shifting from back to front, as I rock back, I'm inhaling. And I'm leaning forward, the exhale. So a very nice way of working here. I'm going to straighten the leg now and address the muscles on the outside of the leg. And like I said before, you really can't separate the physical from the energetic. So when addressing the, bottle, the body in an integrated fashion, I always think about the muscles and the meridians, and then simultaneously nothing after that to try to keep a nice beginner's mind about the approach of the work. So I'm going to be looking at, because of tightness, she had said that she's exhibiting in her legs and her hips, the tensor fascia lata, the iliotibial band, and uh, the most lateral of the quads that come over and interact with the iliotibial band. So I come to the side. So nice length of the leg here. And I'm going to slip my bottom foot under the knee for a bracing so that I can do some nice alternating compression into the side of the leg while the other foot acts as a brace. So again, I'm using the contour of my foot, the arch of my foot, to go over uh, Melissa's structure.
after a few general passes to bring a little bit more specificity into it, I can just use my heel. Because it's a smaller area, it's a little bit more refined. And because of that, you have to be aware of adjusting the pressure. As I'm still working with my breath, inhaling, drawing back, and through the extension and contact, the exhale. Taking this contact down into the lower leg, I'm just going to use the ball of my feet to press into the muscles of the lower leg, the lower lateral compartment of the leg, and the muscles that comprise that compartment are from the midline, just uh, lateral of the tibial ridges, the tibialis anterior, which affects the motion of the foot, and then uh, a little bit more laterally, the peroneal muscles, which help on a structural level add stability uh, to how the foot interacts with the ground and how that energy comes up into the rest of the body. So we want to address this. And just standing up to bring a little bit more specificity coming in. You know, people always ask me, what is the focus uh, of my work? And after listening to what the person who is receiving the work tells me, and based on what I'm observing from the person, and when I start working, I have to say that. My goal is purely supportive, that I try to go to where the person is, uh, both on a, a physical level, and by that I mean when I'm working, that I sink in when I, only until I feel some resistance, because this is where uh, we interact with the person's energy, and not to go past that so much, but to lend a support through your contact, so the person, if they choose, can let go a little bit more. So it's going pretty nice now. And just a few similar things on the other leg and then we'll move up into the arms. Now, usually, uh, quite often, we have a dominant leg, so meaning that when we're standing or doing any activities that requires uh, pushing off, we have a dominant leg where we have our weight settled over that particular leg. And because of that, I find that different techniques are a little easier to apply to get some looseness on this side. So I'm doing a cro what's called cross stretch here, which opens up the lower back, but also addresses the same muscles that we just did on the other side, but in a different fashion. Because that's the thing we need to be aware of as therapists, yes? is that when the moment arises, we have options. We can do what is necessary or appropriate or what we think is appropriate in the moment. So. sinking in nicely. You know, uh, the working with the feet, again, like all this work, has been around for thousands of years, but most recently, uh, the people who have been printing, uh, presenting, excuse me, the Ashiatsu uh, work have really brought a lot of attention to the fact of the validity and the effectiveness of using the feet in a therapeutic fashion when we're doing body work. Um, some of my students, as they uh, looked at this as a viable option of doing it, they said that because it was new to them, they saw the effectiveness or the possible effectiveness of the work and how it would take some of the pressure off their hands, obviously, but they felt a little unstable. Uh, they weren't practiced enough to shift their weight and apply pressure to a body and still stay uh, grounded and uh, balanced enough. So. What we've started to do, and again, you know, all good things borrowed from uh, different cultures, we've been starting to incorporate some pole work where there's just a simple um, 
staff that stabilizes the person enough and gives them enough support and confidence to really uh, focus on the contact uh, of their client. So, nice and easy. It's just a simple support system, very effective. And if you're like me, having pieces of bamboo lying around your house, you can put this right <laughs> into play. So very nice, yes. Now as we venture up into the arms, let me just do a few things to connect the lower portion of the body with the upper. So I'm just curling my fingers up underneath on either side of Melissa's spine, just sinking in here, dressing the pelvis, and then just coming up in a cross fashion, again, just to connect the lower portion of the body with the upper. And here I'm stabilizing over her right ASIS, the front of her pelvis with the palm of my hand, and doing a cross stretch, cupping the head of her humerus on the left side. And I ask her to inhale. And on the exhale, I add not only a sense of compression, but some length into the upper torso. This helps open up the SI joint on the back side so that the pelvis opens up so that the heads of the greater trochanters of the femur articulate a little bit more clearly, energetically, into the acetabulum of the hip. And also it starts to open up the upper torso, particularly as you can see where the palm of my hand is here on Melissa, her upper pecs, allowing her shoulder to go back a little bit and then changing size. Again, stabilizing the front of the hip and crossover stretch on the exhale. So that was a lovely breath. So it really brings some movement into the body. So yes, the arms here, so much of the arms and uh, the use of the arms and hands as far as expressing ourselves and articulating and doing the work uh, that we've chosen to do in this lifetime. We get a lot of tension through our hands, wrists, forearms, uh, particularly, I'd say, as body workers. So we look at different ways of addressing here. And now I'm just doing some nice, gentle work with uh, my feet and the toes here, just coming into the the flexors here of the forearm. You can see the interaction in the hand as I press down on the muscles. These muscles are responsible for the curling of the fingers and the gripping and grasping. And right up into the biceps here. So a little stretch. You know, we have get tension in our arms, we get tension in our hands and wrists. And a lot of times uh, what's commonly called carpal tunnel, but a lot of that comes from the tightness in the arm and also to the way that the shoulder and the scapula is articulating uh, in the back and the rib cage. So along with a stretch here, I've been doing this heel compression into the muscles of the back and also the lines, the energetic lines in the back, the bladder, by simply bringing the body up and stabilizing with my toes and letting the heel go right into the muscle for some nice sustained contact. There's a series of acupressure points that run parallel to the spine on the other side. And what they do is start to relax the nervous system. Very important. I just read an article in Massage Magazine by David Lauderstein and it was a very nice article about mindfulness and body work, but he did call attention to the fact that we know, and I think more people should be aware of it, is that what truly relaxes the muscle is the calming of the nervous system. So in acupuncture and shiatsu, these points that run parallel on either side of the spine uh, affect all of the body parts and organs because of their close proximity to the central nervous system.
So in continuing with the arm work here, just doing some nice stretching here. Again, this constant stretching, like constant pressure, not only takes the slack out and opens up the joints, but also, again, can, uh, is engaging the connective tissue. And uh, this is a lovely way of bringing attention to the tightness in the area. A lot of times the person will feel some fascial burning where their arm is and shoulder and wrist are tied up. So this simple, lovely, supportive stretch is very, uh, very effective. It's starting uh, the opening uh, massage salvos on the arm. Mm -hmm. So here we have a whole set of other muscles in the back of the arm, actually, and, and meridian lines, large intestine, triple warmer, and small intestine that start in the hand and come up and end on the face. So just going to do a little footwork to continue our theme here, starting at the hand and working our way up. You know, and as I'm working, I, you know, I think about uh, the muscles, and I think about the skeletal underpinning, and I also think about the energy lines that run through it. So again, my work is addressing these factors. I'm not separating or focusing on one particular thing, but all of them, because you really, again, can't separate uh, what's going on here. And again, my heel is planted so that you can easily shift your weight from back to front. And that makes for a very effective contact. Coming up here into the shoulder, uh, the pec minor uh, is generally the culprit uh, bringing the shoulder forward. So we're just gonna address that a little bit with some forearm work. Just trying to give my hands as much as a break as possible. So the simple position of moving the arm towards the midline shortens the muscle so that I can come in with my f elbow just sinking into the musculature, pinning the muscle with some nice continuous pressure. There's a lovely acupressure release point right here, uh, lung one, which allows a certain sense of letting go both physically and emotionally in the chest. And after I have the area engage and then just roll the arm out a little bit as a pin and stretch. And you can see the elegance of that. It's just a lovely move. And then the transition to the other side. So I like to make contact where I end it and just come over and go right into the other arm some nice compression and more specific work with the foot. Nice loosening. Pressure's okay, Melissa. Turning the arm over so that we can address the back or the yang meridians of the arm. Upper portion here with the uh, triceps. This is a little knee work here that works quite well. Her arm is being supported by her own body, so it takes the pressure of my patella going into the musculature, and this also helps free up the shoulder. Little restriction here, the upper deltoid. Very nice. And we'll just finish with the same move we did before for pec minor. Nice little adjustment there in the shoulder. And just finishing up with just a little head and neck work. Again, starting with some general compression 
and then also using our heels then to bring a little bit more specificity into the top of the shoulders. A common stress area for us all. Uh, the acupressure point here that is addressed uh, through shiatsu and acupuncture is gallbladder 21 which is right on the top of the trapezius about halfway between the base of the neck and the acromion process. So thank you again for joining Melissa and I in this integrative approach to body work. And if you found this to be interesting and helpful uh, in your practice, I invite you to check out uh, my integrative series uh, that you can find on the link below, uh, which addresses specific issues and in how to choose correct techniques for the, in the moment and the situation that you're working with and individual acupressure points. So thank you again. My name is Randy Cummins, and my website is blackswanproductions.com. Thank you very much.